Welcome. Today we're going to cover, in this lesson, substructures and modules, the building blocks within Maestro. The model you see is a half hull model of a ship with four substructures, and in each substructure is composed of several modules. Substructures and modules are used to create a Maestro model. The building block at the core of it is a module, and then modules are combined together into substructures. Substructures, however, have no real function within Maestro's finite element analysis or evaluation. Strictly, it is used just for organization of the model. For instance, in this case, this model has a hull, and then it has substructure 3, which is frames 100 to 300, essentially the mid-body. You can use these arrangements to allow people, different people, to create models and then join them together. So, for instance, Carlos can be creating the structure in the bow, and uh, Maria can be working on the structure in the stern, and someone else can be doing this the superstructure, and all of these can be then joined together within a single model. So as I said, substructures and modules are the building block of Maestro. Here I have opened up the substructures and modules menu. I open it up, top, hull, here's the various substructures. So I'm going to pick substructure 3, frame 100 to 300, Here's the part name under the general tab. Literally, it's just describing what is the part. This can be modified by the user at any time. What is the location of this substructure? The location is within the global reference point of the model. If this is a US-based model, most likely you're using forward perpendicular as the ref the base or zero point for the ship so everything in the x direction will reference from the forward perpendicular in this case this substructure is 1200 inches from the forward perpendicular the modules within that are then within that substructure are then referenced within the modules uh, reference point. It is entirely up to the user to decide if they want to have local or global references. Personally, I use the forward perpendicular and everything gets referenced to that. That is my particular choice, but it doesn't have to be done for everyone. It is all about how you wish to make it work. Here, substructure 3, module 180 to 220. It is a submodule. There is its location. It's 960 inches, plus some decimal points in the conversion to and from metric. Here's how many sections there are within this module. There are six sections, 80 inches spacing apiece. And here are the default values for that particular module. I will cover all of this later on. Let us now look at this particular substructure. So I'm going to go to substructure 3 here in the, in the file folder, parts tree. I'm going to right click on the substructure and I'm going to say set it to be the current and view part. And there it is. Let me close this, spin it around, there you see, here is substructure 3, frame 100 to 300. I'd like, however, to concentrate on this particular module right here. Once again, I could go here and right-click on the module, or I can go here into the menu, the GUI menu. I can either select something to be a view part, or I can select it to be the view and current part, or I can select it to be just the current part. I'm going to select, when I push this, 
Now, whatever model module I push is now my current and view part. So spinning it around, here you can see in the module. Now, notice as I zoom out, and pan, there is the reference plane further out. So there is that module. It's further down in the total substructure. Let's explore how one can modify a module within a substructure. So I'm showing module three within substructure three. I now want to set the view part to be this total of that substructure. But my part that I'm going to operate on, the current part, is going to be the module. Opening up the module, substructure module menu, I'm going to go select that module. And here it is. And here is its location. 960 inches in the X, nothing in the Y, or vertical direction, and nothing in the Z. Just for the heck of it, this isn't logical, but I'm just showing you how to do it. I'm going to change the Y location of this module. I'm going to move it upwards by 300 inches. I'm going to modify it. I'm going to show the overall set the view part. And you can see that that module is now 300 inches up. Everything has moved with that module. Everything is relative. Now, is it a valid model? No, things aren't connected. But if I wanted to do that, here I am. If I made a mistake and inadvertently did that, I can go back, make it zero again, modify it, view part, and it's back in place. And it's where it's supposed to be. So let's now make this the view in the current part, that particular module. And let's look at the other parts of the substructure and module menu. Sections. This one has, this module has six sections, 80 inches each. I want to add a section. So I'm going to push, I'm going to select add, I want to insert, let's add two sections, again at 80 inches a piece. I'm going to say OK. I'm going to modify it. Notice it's now longer. The endpoints, which we'll cover later in another lesson, have now been moved out 160 inches, two sections at 80 a piece. Now, if these are not what I want, I can select Section 8 and remove it, modify. Now I'm down to seven sections long. Once again, go to that, remove it, modify it, and I'm back to my original spacing. Now, if I wish to change the frame spacing of this particular module, I don't want it to be 80 inches, Let's say I want to make it different. I hit Respace button. Notice it's Respace dot dot dot, so another menu will show up. And I'm going to Respace the sections. Instead of being at 80 inches, let's make it 90 inches. I say OK. Modify. Well, wait a minute, nothing happened. That's because I didn't select any sections. So if I pick all of the sections, I click on one, section one, hit shift, and hit section six. I've now selected, in the standard Microsoft Windows fashion, I've selected that entire list. I want to respace. Let's respace them now at 90 inches. OK. Notice, everything's changed. Modify. They're all longer. Everything has changed. It's all relative. Now, let's bring it back to where it was. Make them all back. I'm going to respace. I'm going to go back to 80 inches. Okay. Modify it. 
But now I want to change, perhaps in this ship, let's say the first section right here is shorter. Call it 60 inches. I'm going to respace that section alone to 60 inches. Okay. You can see it's there. I then modify it, and it's now been shortened. So, modules can all be any, the spacing of the frame spacing within a module can be consistent or it can vary frame spacing by frame spacing. It doesn't matter. So let's go back once again, respace it, get it back to its correct 80 inches. Okay, modify, and we're back where we started. The other thing that can be done in a substructure and module menu I spin it around so we can get a better view of what's going to happen, is sections per bay. This allows the model to be defined other than having the default one frame for every section spacing. Let's say I wanted to have every other section have a frame globally within that module. I'm going to put two sections per frame bay going to modify it. Now, every other frame has been automatically removed. And during the finite element analysis and then subsequent evaluation, Maestro will know that this particular panel, the stiffeners and that structure, the length between the frames is now 160 inches, no longer 80 inches. And thus, evaluation for buckling, certain lengths, that'll all be accounted for. We're going to go back to one section per bay, modify, and they're back. <clears throat> Cylinder length applies to cylindrical models where a particular module may not be from one bulkhead to the next. Collapse modes of cylinders, some of those failure modes go from bulkhead to bulkhead. This is where you would say, the actual cylinder length would be however many feet, inches, meters, whatever your uh, units are. The other thing here is the reference end frame and the opposite end frame. Modules start at the reference end, they go to the opposite end. In this case, you notice there are no <coughs> frames at the opposite end. That says there's a bulkhead there. But perhaps there wasn't a bulkhead, and I want to have frames there. I now put opposite end frame, modify it. Now there are transverse frames at the opposite end of the module. Once again, unchecking, modify, and we're done. Now we're going to switch models to a single, to a model with a single module and go through how to create a new module. Now we're going to create a substructure and module from scratch. Brand new model, and we're going to start creating the entities. Keep in mind when we create a substructure or a module, we're just creating the entity. We're not creating the actual model yet. The rest has to be done. You're just creating the file structure. So here we are, brand new model. I'm going to go to the, see what my units are, so I'm going to go to File, Units, I'm choosing, in this case, I'm cho choosing IPS, inches, pounds, second, and I'm applying that. In Maestro, everything is stored in the metric system, and then is converted on the fly to whatever units you wish. You can go back and forth as you wish. You do, you do not have to select inches and stay there forevermore, or check meters and stay there, or millimeters. You can flip back and forth as you wish. Myself, as an American, it's, uh, I'm very comfortable in pounds, square inches. I know that system very well. I don't personally have a great feel for how many MPA something is, how that feels. So, if I wish to go back and forth, I can swap on the fly looking at results. The model doesn't matter. So you get to choose, but it's not a you choose once and you're there forever. 
So it's a long way of saying, pick a unit structure and it doesn't matter. So here we are. I'm going to pick inches, pounds, second, as I said, OK. So my model's now going to be in inches, pounds, second units. I'm going to go to the parts. There's my substructure menu, as I said, parts and substructure. I'm going to create a substructure. There's top. I'm going to create the name. It's top. And I'm going to call it sub1, substructure1. Its location, I'm going to make it in the x, or longitudinal direction, in the y, vertical, and in the z, transverse. I'm going to kick it all at zero. Essentially, this is reference to the forward perpendicular in this particular case. And I'm going to hit create. So therefore, I now have substructure one. Now, modules are what maestro's finite element structure is. So now I have to create a module within the substructure. Once again, this is just a file structure. But now I'm going to create within substructure one, I want to create a module. I click on module. I'm going to call it module one. So you have typed the name. Now I have a module. Its location, once again, X, Y, Z. I can create it wherever I want. Let's pick 480 inches because I want it to start at 480 inches after the forward perpendicular. I want it to have, hmm, how many sections do I want to have? Let's make it 10 sections. The default is one meter, as you can see here, 10 sections. So I'm going to get rid of sections six through 10. I'm going to remove those. But I'm going to respace these sections one through five. I'm going to respace them. I'm going to want them to be 60 inches long. I'm going to say OK. The default values, one section per bay, as I discussed before. And we're going to have frames at both ends the reference end and the opposite end, just because I want to for this particular module. And I hit Create. So now I've created a module with those things. I could now proceed to build endpoints and build the rest of the structure. So this is how you create a substructure and module from scratch, from nothing. Now I want to show you, though, what happens when you've already built a module and you have something very similar to be done for the next module? Ships are very consistent from one structure to the next. You've gone through a lot of work to create a module. Why don't you copy it in some way? Now we're going to cover that. Now we're going to cover how to create a module from another module. So here in this model, we've got the hull. We've got substructure three, and within it I've got what I've called module two, frames 140 to 180. I now want to create another module aft of this one from frame 180 to one, to let's say 220. Everything's going to be the same. I'm going to absolutely duplicate it and then use that as the template to create the next module. So the first thing we do is we go and we select from the parts tree, you select the module that you wish to copy, you right click, and you copy. And it comes up and it says new part. Well, I don't want it to be new part. I want it to be module three frames 180-220. And just like as with everything in Windows, that's the new name. So there it is. It has actually been created in exactly the same spot as the other one. But I want it to be aft. I want it to be back here at the aft end of this module. So going to the parts menu, substructure and modules menu, there's the top, select. I'm going to have the substructure be the part, the current part, because that's the frame of reference I want to use. But I want the module 
to be the view part. So there it is. So the substructure is the current part. That's the frame of reference I'm in, the X, Y, and Z location. And there's my module, which is my view part. I've got a general. There's the name. I've got the right guy. It's a module, you know. There it is. So I'm in substructure three, module three. There's my part. Location. I want it to be starting at the aft end of the prior module. So that is 480 inches. So I select 480 inches, type that, modify it. Doesn't look like anything happened, but if I go and look at set the view part, I now have two modules. There it is. And there it is. Exactly identical modules. And I can now use this module referring back and forth between modules to start making changes to my structure. For instance, very quickly, and then we're going to depart this lesson. Here, I've got these endpoints, you know, for the hull. I would like the reference end of this module, the deck edge, to line up with that one. So, my current part is module three. I'm going to go to my endpoint menu very quickly. We're just going to do this once. This is covered more in another lesson. I'm going to pick that endpoint. There it is. It's been highlighted. I want the reference end to be here. I want it to be this point right here. I could go look it up, but instead I'm saying no. I want the reference end to be there. Now it's the same point. I'm going to modify. That structure is now pulled out. And you would go through the rest of the structure and do that. So this is how you create modules.